Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 9 to 13. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the, uh, the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or a use of divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Um, verse 14, For these nations which thou shalt possess hearken unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to uh, so to do. All right. Let's read um, the lyrics to Iron Maiden's Moonchild. Seven deadly sins, seven ways to win, seven holy paths to hell and your trip begins. Seven downward slopes, seven bloodied hopes. Seven are your burning fires, seven your desires. I am he, the bornless one, the fallen angel watching you. Hmm. Lucifer, huh? Let's continue. Babylon, the scarlet whore. I'll infiltrate your gratitude. Don't you dare to save your son. Kill him now and save the young ones. Be the mother of a bird's strangled babe. Be the devil's own Lucifer's my name. Wow, this is pretty bold. Hmm. Moonchild, hear the mandrake scream. Oh, Moonchild, open the seventh seal. I count the heads of those unborn, the accursed ones. I'll find them all. And if you die by your own hand as a suicide, you shall be damned. And if you try to save your soul, I will torment you. You shall not grow old. With every second and passing breath, you will be so alone. Your soul will bleed to death. Moonchild, hear the mandrake scream. Moonchild, open the seventh seal. Moonchild, you'll be mine soon, child. Moonchild, take my hand tonight. The twins, they are exhausted. Seven is this night. Gemini is rising as the red lips kiss to bite. Seven angels, seven, seven demons battle for his soul. When Gabriel lies sleeping, this child was born to die. Oh, oh. One more dies and one more uh, lives. One baby cries, one mother grieves. For all the sins you will commit, you'll beg for forgiveness and none I'll give. A web of fear shall be your coat to clothe you in the night. A lucky escape for your for you young man. But I'll see you damn in, uh, damned in endless night. Moonchild, hear the mandrake scream. Moonchild, open the seventh seal. Moonchild, you'll be mine soon, child. Moonchild, take my hand tonight. And as we can see, it's written by Adrian Smith and Bruce Dickinson. All right, so as you can see, I got a lot of stuff open here. Um, you know, a lot of tabs. There's a lot we got to cover today. But before we start even to expose Iron Maiden, which is, you know, pretty much self-explanatory. I mean, you read these lyrics and these people tell you who they you know, worship, who they believe in, um, who they follow, whatever you want to call it. They tell you pretty much that they're all of these things that Deuteronomy tells you not to do. They're pretty much doing them. So they're witches and wizards and all of that. But um, we're going to look a little bit into um, a few more things because um, honestly, I used to love this band. I I, I think I saw them like uh, I seen them like seven times in concert before I got saved. And the first time I went to see them was about 20 years ago, 2002 or 2003, I can't remember exactly, but around that time. And um, the last time I saw them in 2007 in concert. So it's been a while, of course. And, you know, I, um, I've been to a lot of shows in general, and uh, I might cover some of that. You know, obviously I'm covering bands you know this one is very satanic indeed and uh, for me to i used to worship this band i really i know everything about this band that there's to know i i have all the info but uh it would be like a three hour video to expose this band really in detail and show you everything so that's not what this video is about i'm not gonna do an really an in-depth um I'm not going to do a complete in-depth video here, but we will um, point out a few things that are pretty obvious. And uh, if you it, really, if you're into this still, um, it will. I hope it will make you burn your um, albums if you still have them, or DVDs, or if you're, you know, if you like this band, because I'm gonna show to you 100% that they're Satanists. All right, let's read another um, lyric of this album, Seven Son of a Seventh Son, which um, we just read Moonchild, which is the opening track. Let's read Infinite Dreams. It's the second song on the album. Um, and then we're going to go and break it down. 
Infinite dreams, I can't deny them. Infinity is hard to comprehend. I couldn't hear those screams even in my wildest dreams. Suffocation, waking in a sweat. Scared to fall asleep again in case the dream begins again. Someone chasing, I cannot move. Standing rigid, a nightmare statue. What a dream, when will it end and will I transcend? <clears throat> Excuse me. Restless sleep, the mind's in turmoil. One nightmare ends and not a fertile. It's getting to me so scared to sleep, but scared to wake now in too deep. Even though it's reached new heights, I rather like the restless nights. It makes me wonder, it makes me think, there's more to this, I'm on the brink. It's not the fear of what's beyond, it's just what I might respond. I have an interest almost craving, but would I like to get too far in? It can be all coincidence, too many things are evident. You tell me, you're an unbeliever, spiritualist. Well, me, I'm neither. But wouldn't you like to know the truth or what's out there to have the proof and find out just which side you're on? Where would you end in heaven or in hell? So basically here they kind of try to question you, right? Like you are just, you know, you don't believe or, you know, you're still skeptical. Like they're trying to get you to that. You know, I'm just an agnostic. You know, I want to know about God, maybe perhaps, you know, is there heaven? Is there hell? Does it exist? Although here, if we read the first in these first verses where he says, infinity is hard to comprehend. I couldn't hear those screams even in my wildest dream. Suffocation. This is possession. This is 100% devil possession. Okay. He's got spirits tor torturing him. Satanic spirits. So, but Maiden always tries to, and we will see that as we will go and expose them. Um, in their own words, they are always the ones that are trying to prove to you that, you know, they're like, they tried to stand in the middle, you know. They're trying to be in the gray area, and I'd say there is no gray area. It is either evil or good, either wrong, you know, either good or wrong, you know. There's either black and white. There is no middle ground, and they're trying to sell you the middle ground, you know, like they're sitting on the fence. Well, let, let, let's finish this, and then we're gonna then we're gonna break it down. Yeah, oh, help me, um, help me to find my true self without seeing the future. Save me, save me from torturing myself even within my dreams. Oh, there's got to be just more to it than this. Or tell me why do we exist? I'd like to think that when I die, I'd get a chance another time, and to return and live again, reincarnate, play the game again and again and again and again. And okay, this was written by Steve and Percy Harris, Steve Harris, bass player and um, main guy in the band. Anyway, what is Moonchild? Hmm, Moonchild, as we can see right here. Song by Iron Maiden from the Seventh Son of a Seventh Son album. Now, we click on that. And we go right down here to the background. There we go, it's in songs. Right here. I'm not going to read all of this. You can read this for yourself if you wish to. This is just Wikipedia, but again, I'm just going to read this first sentence because this is kind of important. Of the album's remaining songs, Metal Hammer states that Moonchild is loosely based on the Aleister Crowley novel of the same time, while Infinite Dreams is about the character who implores a spiritualist to unlock the meaning behind his tortured dreams. So they're promoting this, right? Well, my Bible says, There shall not be found anyone among you that make it his son or his daughter, uh, to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. Hmm. Well, that's what this guy's doing, right? A spiritualist is like a necromancer, right? To unlock the meaning behind it, his tortured dreams, right? So, but this is what strikes me here. Aleister Crowley's Moonchild. Well, <laughs> Let's take a look at it. Oh, yeah. And well, this is the cover. You can see it's very satanic. And I'm not going to break down the covers. They are very self-explanatory. You can see Eddie here, this one eye, right? This creature is called Eddie. He's obviously holding a devil that's stuck in his heart. I mean, there's a demon inside. That's a devil, whatever you want to call it. There's an apple right here. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You got the sun right here and all of that. And um this is really unimportant. I'm, I'm not going to break down the symbolism. The album covers. Like I said, that will be a long, long video. But we're going to look at Moonchild. I actually found this online. This is, I'm going to show it to you right now, Moonchild 
by Alistair Crowley. As you can see, cop uh, copyright Ordo Templi Orientis, OTO. And this is the cover of the book, of the novel. As you can see, we're reading from that. And again, I'm not going to read. I didn't even read this. I would never read this. Number one is boring. Number two, it's just a bunch of nonsense. And uh, I ain't got the time to do this, to be honest. I'm, I got too much time I need to spend in my Bible and spend with my family. And But I was just like this, going a little bit through the story until I came to page 112. And why do I remember that? Because we're going to read a little bit from it. Um, Because you will see where one of the famous sayings comes from. It's actually from this book. So let's... Let's take a look from. Let's take a look at it quickly. Uh, 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 mm, 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 mm. Let's see. Uh, One hundred and twelve. Hmm. Now I lost it. Hmm. Was it 124? Just give me a sec. There we go. Okay, it was 100 and... It was page 120. My bad. All right, let's read a little bit from here. Oh, you were splendid, sister, cried a voice, uh, and two scared arms were thrown about her neck. It was the girl of the night before. Didn't you escape, babbled Lisa, incoherent? But the child's ringing laughter silenced her. I forgive you for spoiling my um, record, she bubbled over. You know, I'm supposed to get them five times in six. Lisa stood bewildered, but sister Saiba was wringing her hands and kissing her, and Cyril Gray was telling the child that he had first claim on the stranglehold. And then all day suddenly melted from her. Simon If was walking toward her, and his hand was open. I congratulate you, sister. He solemnly, uh, he said solemnly, upon your initiation to a holy order, you have well earned the robe in which you stand, for you have paid its price. Service to others without thought of the consequence to yourself. Let us break our fast. And he took uh, Lisa's arm presently while they came to the refectory as in uh, as in a well-rehearsed play everyone fell into its place into his place and before Lisa realized the utter subversion that had taken place in her being sister Saiba was on her feet proclaiming do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law you're seeing it for yourself folks it's right from this novel do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Lisa thought the breakfast the most delicious she had ever tasted in her life. A great reaction from the strain of her previous 24 hours was upon her. She had lived a lifetime in that period, and in a sense she had most surely died and been reborn. She felt like a little child. She wanted to climb onto everybody's knee and be hugged. She had regained at a single stroke the infant's faith in human nature. She looked at the universe as simply as a great artist does, for in him too lives and rejoices the eternal babe. But the greatest surprise was in her physical health and energy. She had passed through a fierce and furious day, a night of infernal torture, <clears throat> Excuse me. yet she was unaccountably buoyant, eager, assiduous in every act, from her smiled word of pleasure to the drinking of her coffee. Everything at that meal seemed a matter of intoxication. She had not previously realized that, that toast, properly understood, was a superior stimulant to brandy. When breakfast ended, she could not have walked across the room. It was dancing or nothing. So she said to herself, somehow she found herself once more in the chapel of abominations. Wow. On the altar was laid a sprig of gorse at, and the sunlight streaming through the apex of the vault made its thorny bloom of the very fire and color of day. Simon If stood behind the altar. Cyril Gray was on her right hand, Sister Cybele on her left. Then they joined their hands about on her. I will now complete the formality of your reception, said the old man. Say after me, I, your name, I, Lisa Lajufra, whatever. Solemnly promised to devote myself, she repeated a phrase, to the discovery of my true purpose in this life. She echoed in a lower tone. All three concluded, so mote it be. I receive you into this order, which Simon If I confirm you the robe which you have won. I agree 
agreed with, uh, I greet you with the right hand of fellowship, and I induct you to the gate of the great work, still holding the hand which he had grasped. He led her from the chapel. They passed through the refectory and entered the room uh, on its other side. This room was furnished as a library. There was nothing in it to suggest magic. As you can see, magic with K, with the K at the end. That's Aleister Crowley's magic that he always talks about in his books as well. He's got black magic book. Of course, we got it with the K. Right? This is the Hall of Learning. And Simon, if here must your work begin. And innocent as it seems, it is a thousandfold more dangerous than the chapels from which you have come forth with so much credit. I don't think we need to go on reading this anymore. Um, honestly, I didn't even know I will find this online. I didn't look for it. I was searching for um, Alistair Crowley. Uh, Moonchild just Googled it and it came up. PDF. So we saw it. Now, let's see what we can connect with this. How can we connect Iron Maiden to Alistair Crowley? Well, first of all, we just saw it um, in our own Wikipedia page that they are writing about, you know, it being loosely based on Crowley. I think it's not just loosely based on Crowley. I know that Bruce Dickinson and I Maiden are Crowley worshippers. I mean, we can cre clearly see that, right? Um, the Beast on the Road's U.S. leg provided controversial when an American conservative political lobbying group claimed that I Maiden were satanic because of the new album's title track and demonic cover art. And the point, at the, to the point where a group of Christian activists destroyed Iron Maiden records in protest. In recent years, Dickinson stated that the band treated this as a silliness and that the demonstrations, in fact, gave them loads of publicity. Loads of publicity. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to do that. An American professor, Brian A. Bar Bardeen, referring to visual aspect of, bands, of the band's third album, stated the author's um, message seems to be understandable. This album... He, Vokes power, passion, and music present darker themes and images. As you can see, this is from their tour. You can see why people would think. I guess people had common sense back then and could see that this imagery is satanic. You got the devil with a pitchfork there on one side. You got the devil with a pitchfork there on the other side. You got the Eddie coming out of the pyramid. Eddie on stage and a bunch of long-haired losers playing this satanic nonsense. Of course they were a satanic band, but of course they have to laugh about it. If we can see his drum here, Nico McBrain's drum is a pyramid. It's got a pyramid on. I mean, we can't see this completely, but you can see that this is the shape of a pyramid. Now, it's not the complete picture, but it doesn't really matter. Um, again, this is Wikipedia, and I'm not going to read all of this. You can read it for yourself if you're interested, but we're going to look at some of the albums. Um, but there's more here. It's claims of satanic influences. Musical stouts. Here we go. We got the number of the beast in 1982. I mean, honestly, to me, this looks satanic. I don't know about you, but that's the devil there with the pitchfork and the eddy. This is very satanic. You got the fire, right? More fire. All of this nonsense. Um, yeah. All of these albums are satanic. I'm not even going to look into them. I'm just going to show you this, a few of them. You got Power Slave here, which has the Egyptian theme. We got No Prayer for the Dying, which had a blasphemous song called Holy Smoke. Right there was a single. What does it say about Holy Smoke? Look at the album cover. It's got the one eye and he's holding it over his hand, the TV, like he's holding it up his third eye. You got a preacher here mockingly burning under, as you can see a preacher on TV. They were mocking, I think, televangelists or something. I don't know what the official story is of this garbage. 
There we go. The song deals with the many televangelist scandals that took place in the U.S. in the late 1980s, including mentions of Jimmy the Reptile, a reference to Jimmy Swaggart, the TV Queen, a possible reference to Tammy Faye Baker, Noah, the Plenty of Bad um, Preachers for uh, the Devil to Stoke, contrary uh, to what some believe. However, this song is not aimed at the Christian religion itself, but rather the people that abuse it to make gains for themselves. This is one of the very few Maiden songs with profanity in the lyrics. For example, flies around isht, bees around honey. And I've lived in filth and I've lived in sin and I still smell cleaner than the isht you're in, gross. Which is replaced by gunshot sounds in censored versions. So, of course they had to mock these fake televangelists and these... um charismatics so they can take a shot at christianity and it was it was a mockery of christianity i believe but um yeah anyway i don't think here fear of the dark we don't have to look at these anymore i don't we just don't want to waste time into looking into the um, album covers although there is an album that it's called brave new world which came out in 2000 as you can see here this is the city of london like some post-apocalyptic nonsense and, of course, it was also based on Aldous Huxley. There we go. The album artwork and the title song ref references to the novel of the same name by Aldous Huxley. The upper half of the artwork was created by Derek Riggs, blah, blah. All right. So this album was the first album that I actually bought by Iron Maiden in 2000 when it was released. I actually got a copy of this album. And... Uh, yeah, the lyrics are very, very, um, especially Brave New World. They're very um, occult, absolutely 100%. You can see that this is a sellout band. Now, what is so interesting about all of this? We got The Chemical Wedding, which is an album by Bruce Dickinson. All right, let's read a little bit about it. Bruce Dickinson, this is a solo album after he left Iron Maiden. And this was the last Iron Maiden uh, Bruce Dickinson CD before he came back to Iron Maiden in 2000. And this was only released one year before Brave New World. So what's interesting about this? Let's read it. The Chemical Wedding is the fifth solo album by English heavy metal singer Bruce Dickinson released on 15 September 1998 through Dickinson's own label by Air Raid Records. Um... The record draws some inspiration from the works of William Blake featuring sung and um, spoken excerpts of his prophetic works and poetry, notably, and, <clears throat> excuse me, did those, free, uh, uh, did those feet in ancient time, on the track Jerusalem. And with cover art from the painting, The um, Ghost of, the F of a Flea, although the name of the album and its title track derive from the Rosicrucian Manifesto by Chemical Wedding of Christian Rosenkreutz. Wow. This would be a separate video. I would have to look into this. I I wasn't aware of this because I didn't read this. I didn't read this um, before. I had the CD. I used to love it as well. But um, I didn't see that connection. There is a Crowley connection as we will see. But I didn't see that one. I didn't know this. Interesting. So let's continue. Um, as the previous album, it featured Maiden guitarist uh, Adrian Smith, then a uh, member of Dickinson's solo outfit. This is the last Dickinson album before he and Adrian Smith rejoined our Maiden the following year. So, the film Chemical Wedding was a screenplay by Dickinson and was released in May 2008. I actually had this movie and I burned it. Me as a, I was a huge, like I said, I was a huge Iron Maiden fan and I had everything and I had all the Dickinson albums and I actually had this movie, which was, by the way, garbage. But I had it. It says it features a title track, the title uh, track from the album and soundtrack, but concerns a story about the reincarnation, that concerns a story about the reincarnation of Aleister Crowley and it's otherwise unrelated. Yeah, right. This album is speaking about alchemy and is speaking about occultist occultism um and actually dickinson was speaking about talking about this in an interview you know about how he's an alchemist and all of that and um i can't find it it was a long time ago that i read that i don't even know exactly where i would look you know to um it might have been one of those fan magazines i used to own those but <clears throat> i burned all of that but i found some other stuff that's interesting that we will look into 
let's uh, just read a little bit more from here. Dickinson says each song has a sort of frame in which it operates. Uh, has a sort of frame in which it operates. The first song is about fear. The second song is about tragedy. The third song is about union. You could pick a theme or a topic for each song so that what's the song about and then you put it in a frame. For example, one of the songs is about failure and the song is called The Trumpets of Jericho. In the story of The Trumpets of Jericho in the Bible, the wall falls down when the tribes of Israel war around the city and their trumpets. Except in this song, they don't. It doesn't work. You've done everything right. Wow. But the wall's still standing. And what do you do? How do you face up that to that fact? And it's all part of the whole alchemy thing. There you go. What were the alchemists trying to do? They were trying to achieve something that was virtually impossible. They spent their whole lives trying to do it. And all of them failed. Or pretty damn near all of them failed. So what does that feel like? And how does that work? And why keep carrying on? So that's the way the songs kind of work and why you don't have to go into them in all this detail. You could just sit back there and let it hit you over the head like a sledgehammer. Cause the album works. It's just... Because um, the album works, it's just really heavy album, but it's there. It's all there if you want to dig through the words. So basically, um, yeah, he said it in this interview. I don't know. I might have read this complete interview or had it somewhere. Um, as you can see, this is from a website, obviously. I've listened to this band for 20 years. To be honest, I cannot even tell you what, well, not 20, but a good 15 years I used to follow this band. And I could not tell you all the stuff that I had, but I burned it and um, I would have to look online. But as you can see, he actually mentioned that it's alchemy. Well, which is interesting because alchemy is something that Alistair Crowley used to practice. He wrote a few books on alchemy, which I might cover in another video if we go deeply into... If we go deep into um, exposing Crowley, maybe. Let's see. But so this is him, the album, Chemical Wedding, right? Now, let's see the movie. Like I said, this movie is garbage. I watched it a few times. What do you see straight away? Head there, you see some bald guy, right? That looks like Crowley. You can see the satanic bell right here above it with the star of Satan, right? The goat of Mendes, Baphomet. You can see the black and white behind him. And all of these symbols, which are probably some, yeah, some, some al 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 alchemy stuff, definitely. Because this whole chemical wedding is an alchemy thing. You can actually Google the chemical wedding and you will get a lot of alchem um, alchemy stuff. Anyway, what it says here, chemical wedding released in the U.S. as Crowley. I had the movie called Crowley. I had the U.S. version, of course, and <clears throat> it was, um, I think that the original version had something like uh, some scenes that were cut. The U.S. version was the, um, with all the deleted scenes and all of that. So I had like that whole set. Again, it says, it's called, it calls it here science fantasy horror. Of course, they're gonna do that, call it like that, because they don't want you to to know that calling up a devil, calling up that that's what they're doing. They 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 are calling up the devil of um the devil that possessed um Crowley. It says here the film was produced by Bill and Ben Productions in conjunction with the London-based Focus Films. It was a, it's directed by Julian Doyle. The story is based on an original screenplay by Bruce Dickinson, frontman of heavy metal band Iron Maiden. Dickinson released a solo album entitled The Chemical Wedding. We just saw that, which despite sharing the title and the, uh, the title and the title track from the film soundtrack is otherwise unrelated. We already read that as well there. Upon entering a virtual, so that's the plot, reality machine, Professor Oliver Haddo, a modern Cambridge scholar, becomes possessed by the spirit of the infamous occultist Alistair Crowley. As the machine's program has been corrupted by a former follower of Crowley's, resurrected 50 years after his death, Crowley begins his occult practice as a new Sikh and a new scholar bride whom he can marry in an occult ceremony which will increase his power. Ha 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 ha, very funny, but this is all fantasy, right? It's just fantasy. No, it's not fantasy, it's 100% what these people are doing and it's reality and as we know Crowley wrote in his books how to do all of these different rituals calling the devils and the Bible speaks about it so I don't think it's fantasy because the Bible says right here again I will read it 
or a charmer, or consulted with familiar spirits, or wizard, or necromancer, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them off from before thee. Again, verse 10 says, There shall not be found any among among anyone among you that maketh his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or that is a divination, observer, times, or enchanter, or a witch. And that's all of these things that we just read right here. Now, Why is this important? Well, a few years prior to this chemical wedding, he released the best of Bruce Dickinson. I think that was the fourth album, just one album before it is. And if you look at this, you can see the Baphomet right there on the CD and all these alchemy symbols. And I will make a video exposing some of these alchemy teachings i definitely will do that this is the cover of the cd as you can see it's got the same symbolism and it's got the six the six and the six and of course you got the baphomet star it's 100 percent occult this man is a satanist and a mocker a scoffer whatever you want to call him but he's 100 percent satanic and we can see it maybe better here I'm just trying to find a better, there we go, better shot. Six, six, six. In the letters, you can look for it yourself. And of course, it seems to be he's standing in a pyramid right here or in front of a pyramid, as we can see that in the back as well. He's standing in front of a pyramid and you got this nonsense alchemy symbol. Now, Moving into something else right now. Before I am Hayden, of course, in the 1960s, there was an artist called Arthur Brown. And he released the um, album The Crazy World of Arthur Brown. Now, why am I referring to Arthur Brown? Let's read some of this garbage first. I am the god of hellfire. Wow. And I bring you fire. This is pretty explanatory, right? This guy is the devil. He's telling you he's the devil. I'll take you to burn fire. I'll take you to learn. I'll see you burn. You fought hard and you saved and earned. But all of it is going to burn. And your mind, your tiny mind, you know you've really been so blind. Um, now's your time. Burn your mind. You're falling far, too far behind. Oh, no, 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 no. You're going to burn fire to destroy all you've done. Fire to end all you've become. I'll feel you burn. You've been living like a little girl in the middle of your little world. And your mind, your tiny mind, you know you've really been so blind. It keeps repeating. Fire, I'll take you to burn. You're gonna burn. You're gonna burn, 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 burn. Fire, I'll take you to burn. Why is this important? A lot of people don't even know who Arthur Brown is. Well, Arthur Brown was one of the very first people that started a so-called shock rock. Okay? Like, he wanted to shock people, right, with his appearance and all of that. In the United States, we have Alice, um, Alice Cooper... And people thought that, you know, because he's the most famous one, that he's like one of the people that started it first. But as you can see here, this was released in on January, nine, uh, January 1st, 1968. This guy started it before. Um, and this guy, by the way, this wasn't his first CD. He actually had a few records. Uh, sorry, not CD, um, record. He had a few records released before this one. So Alice Cooper and all these people are influenced by this guy. They were looking up to this guy. This guy is one of the originators of that whole genre of satanic shock rock, as they call it. Like Marilyn Manson. We had Marilyn Manson. I mean, we still, sadly, he's still around. Music is awful. But this guy was like the first of his time. He really started it. And... It's funny, when we look at an interview with Arthur Brown, I won't read the whole interview, but that's him. You can pretty much see he's mocking you by putting the tongue out, right? Putting the X. X is Antichrist. He's now in his 70s, as you can see. He's looking like he's going to die any second. Looks like the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> And of course, I'm going to read you something that's very interesting and spot on. He's actually given some truth right here in this interview. 
You're getting ready to play these songs on tour again for the first time since about when they were released and your official debut turns 50 next year. There's a lot of conspiracy theorists who use this idea of spectacle and ritual and making some very paranoid ideas about the occult. Most recently Lady Gaga's Super Bowl performance was likened by InfoWars founder Alex Jones to be some ritual feast of flesh laden with hidden messages. What would you say to these people? Can we really give modern pop stars that much credit to believe they're ruffling through the pages of old tattered books and learning about Baphomets? Or is much of this symbolism and pageantry more subconscious? So he's already telling you, they're already telling you here. This is the observer. This is some kind of, I don't even know this, you know, this um, website. I never even, it's just one of those rags, right? One of those stupid magazines. But um, they're giving you a lot of truth here, except... They're discrediting us by, you know, linking us to Alex Jones, who is a joke and a fraud. And a, you know, PSYOP operator, whatever you want to call it, because that's what he really is. He is 100% um, Cointel Pro agent. But um, let's read what this guy has to say about all of that said, well, I did watch the Lady Gaga Super Bowl amazing game laughs. Of course, you could take any tennis match as a satanic ritual, you know, if that's where your heart is. I think that there are rituals and things going on that speak to certain populations. And it's coming through the television. So he's telling you that the television is satanic and that rituals, he's basically admitting all of this says there was that case where the guy i think he was a child molester and one guy who just happened to be an expert in that just happened to be watching the trial he saw the defendant looking as a young child was given evidence and the defendant was going brown draws a finger across his throat symbolizing a death threat and the expert called up so those things do happen but what is really the most horrible thing if you like is that everybody's controlled by their own lack of harmony or if they happen to have found that harmony pageants theatrical place their rituals to bring power to someone's control the church rituals can be used for that you just have to look at the way the catholic church is at present facing charges in australia and yet it's supposed to be the healthy spiritual side of human life so as you can see he's picking at the catholic church which is not the true church of jesus christ it's not christian but of course he has to mention that to try to you know, to try to um, discredit any type of Christianity or as he calls it, a spiritual, healthy spiritual side of human life. Huh. I'm, of course, quoting him. And as you can see here, he's given you the code of silence. This is a 100% control puppet, a Satanist, nothing more than a shell. No hero, given a little bit of truth, but still, he's given you the code of silence. And he's 100% control, just like all of these people. And if we go and look a little bit here of this nonsense. I am the God of Hellfire, and I bring you fire. All right. Sorry, I, I hope I won't get, you know, a strike for this. This is from, I wasn't going to play this. As you can see, he's dancing like a devil with some fire on his head. And what's even more important, I'm going to make the screen larger so I'll show you right now. So while he's dancing around there, now again, this is from Beat Club, 1968. This was released in 1968. Look at the, I'm going to try to find better. You can see the one eye on his t-shirt. You see? Ah, I'm just going to try to. try to find it but you can see how quickly they are showing it quickly flashing so his subconscious mind picks it up because he's jumping like a maniac there you go they flashed it right there there we go that's how quick it goes that was very subliminal There you go. It's got the one eye right there. There we go. There we go. You see? 
see it right there. Maybe I can even find, there we go. It's right there. This has been going on forever, folks, for a long, long time. You expect me to believe that this guy is just a, not a guy, that this is just a, an artist, a good artist. Yeah, this guy was a fabulous singer. He was a great musician. I used to listen to this type of music and all of that. He had a high range and all of that. And But at the end of the day, all of these people sold their souls to Satan. And you have to ask yourself, what should I do? If you feel convicted by watching this, if you feel conviction in your heart right now, if you know that this is wrong, after the little bit of proof that I showed you, we could be talking about this for another five days. You saw that this is satanic. And you know it. If you have, if you feel convicted, and if you own any of these, you know, records by any of these losers, just burn them, man. Burn them. Burn them and give your life to Jesus Christ. If you truly feel convicted by watching this and you know you should not be listening to this music, you know, friend, God does care what we listen to. God does care about this music. If you listen to this nonsense, God does care. God does care. God doesn't want you to pollute your life, your soul, and your mind with this garbage. He wants you to give your life and your heart to Him. And I believe that that's what you should do. If you feel convicted by this video, and if you feel like God is drawing you, it's good. That conviction is good. It's the Holy Spirit working in you. And God's Word says, God's Word says, you got 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, in which ye saved, if you keep my memory what I preached unto you, unless if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless um, ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 13, God tells you that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the Scriptures say, Whosoever believeth on Him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friends, time is short. Time is running short. Christ is at the door. Give your life to Jesus Christ right now. Just repent of your sins and ask the Lord to create in you a clean heart. Ask the Lord to reveal Himself to you. Ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins and ask Him to become the Lord and Savior of your life. And God will give you, He will make you new, He will cleanse you from all your unrighteousness, and He will give you a new heart with new desires. Friends, time is short, and Christ is at the door. I do believe that. So, I hope that this was a blessing, and I hope that this video will be a blessing to all of those who will watch it. I know for a fact that I'm probably going to get some trolls, comments as you know they will be deleted i don't really want to deal with it i'll just keep praying for them i hope that they will come to christ i thank you for all your prayers i thank you for those who have been contacted you know staying in touch and contacted me and wrote nice comments and emails and all of that i love you all you know who you are i'll continue praying for all of you um and i'll see you on sunday for our premiere and that's it. Please continue keeping me in your prayers. And I hope this video was a blessing. Continue keeping us in your prayers, please. And um, that's it. I hope you have a blessed day. God bless you all.